to use React to be able to work in their world, which is fundamentally different than the Microsoft that you all imagine was Microsoft. That holy, it's our way or you're gonna lose and we're gonna beat you to death company that they were 15 years ago. That was very successful at doing that. Um, they're now not that company, right? I hated that company. I absolutely hated that company. That company nearly cost me my livelihood because what I did was in direct competition to what they were winning, right? I hated that company. Unfortunately, I don't hate that company anymore because they're an open source company now. They are. Microsoft have more <coughs> commits on GitHub than any other company, right? Well, that says a lot for a start, for open source projects. And their corporate document management workflow portal thing, I mean, it is, 95 of the Fortune 100 use this product, right? So it's absolutely ubiquitous within corporate America is SharePoint uh, uses React, and I'm gonna tell you why, okay? So, uh, basically, once upon a time, SharePoint used to be on-premises, and companies would pay a ridiculous amount of money for licenses, and companies like ours would be paid to bastardize it in the worst possible way. <laughs> I'm not being for, right. So we bought SharePoint. Well, we like what it does, but we don't like how it looks. So we're going to basically pay you an awful lot of money to make it look like what we want and all this kind of stuff. Brilliant. Love it. Thank you. Two years later, Microsoft write, right, okay, we've got a new version coming out. Right. Well, we want to upgrade. Well, you can't. Well, why not? Well, because we've buggered it. You asked us to, we've ruined it, you can't do an upgrade, it'll all break. Well, 2003, 2007, 2011, 2013, this was the best cycle to be a contractor ever. It was brilliant. Companies were truly, genuinely, stupidly putting all of their money into customizing something because it was on premises. And well, yeah, that didn't go so well. So um, Microsoft then went to the cloud. So instead of having Exchange on-prem, you now have Office 365, you're in the cloud. When you're on-premises and you own the servers, you can do whatever the hell you want to them. When you're in the cloud on a t shared tenant, eh, not such a good idea. And they don't let you do that. There's no such thing as trusted .NET <coughs> code in the cloud because you don't want me to write really crappy code and destroy your service. So you can't do that anymore, all right? So I am gonna talk about React and I'm not gonna talk about any code whatsoever. There, there, I'm sorry, there is a conference called the No Code Conference. It's all brilliant, I love it. Okay, I stole the logo. Okay, so SharePoint is business productivity, blah, 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 blah. All right, right, this is what it looks like, all right? No, this is what it used to look like, right? This is 2007, maybe, maybe. Um, one of the other things with Microsoft, as they used to be, is you had to use their tools. If you say this is what I use, I'm not kidding. This is what Microsoft's attitude was. To work in our products, you have to use our tools, right? And well, the tools for SharePoint were not very good, frankly. And for those of you who are a web developer, you may notice this is horrible from a web development perspective. That's because it was created by back-end developers, right? This was, you know, the whole of SharePoint was program on the back-end and we'll build something for you automatically. It will work, it's functional. It's actually very quick um, to create, but it looks like crap. Now, looking like crap was okay in 20, 2007. Not okay today, all right? So, um, yeah, they are on-prem, they're like, uh, what, what they call the trusted code model. You'd have an administrator go in and say, I trust this code, drop it into our SharePoint, whatever, it'll work. If you wanted to be clever and use um, a web-based web part or something, they basically used iframes. They cheated, they didn't really know how to do it. They basically added an iframe and it worked in there and that was kind of icky, right? This is what old SharePoint looks like. In 2007, this was freaking amazing, right? I, you laugh, you're not old enough to remember that, shut up. Okay, all right, this was brilliant. This is what was killing me. 
because Microsoft realized that making something easy to use and look good doesn't matter whether it'll actually do what we say it will, it looked really good. Okay, I grew up with this. Look, it's even in Internet Explorer, whatever the hell that is, okay? All right, nowadays we look at this and we go, right, that's a bunch of dinosaurs. Old people use that. Well, fine, yes, I'm old people. Okay, so we go to the cloud. In the cloud, we still want to be able to add our own functionality as a corporation, but we can't put our .NET code in the cloud. How the hell are we gonna do this? So Microsoft created the SharePoint framework, which is a framework where you basically create a React component and by hook and by crook and by all sorts of interesting methods, you basically drop that into SharePoint. The administrator still says, I trust this. But it is a React component running inside of the React environment that's already provided you for you by SharePoint. And instead of using their tools, you can use your tools. They don't care. You can use Atom, Sublime, WebStorm, VS Code, whatever you want to actually write these React components. So that immediately opens this to a whole plethora of people who go, well, Microsoft, well, I can't do that. Oh, look, I can do that. And I'm told that this is absolutely terrible React, <laughs> and this is not the way you should do it, but I don't care. This is my example, all right? So now, this is what a modern SharePoint site looks like, okay? All right? Because again, they've realized looking cool is way more important than actual functionality, all right? But it's also actually quite functional, all right? So what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to show you this uh, in my tenant and show you what it does and show you how it works. And that's not sharing that because it's stupid PowerPoint. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. All right, let me go over here. Mm, hello, world. All right. So that is a React component, and so is that. All right. These are not in an iframe. All right. These are React components that are dropped onto the page, and if you are smart enough or you have enough power and privilege, you can go onto a page like this and you can actually build things into the page, right? So if you imagine you're a corporate developer, you're gonna build a piece of functionality that's gonna live in lots of different places within <coughs> your environment. You can build this, and now it can be dropped into any one of these pages. So okay. I can take my nice little hello world, I can drop it in here, I can save it, I can publish it, it's done, right? So my each one of these individual components within the web page is a React component. And you're like, oh, okay. So, well, so what the framework does is it allows me to do things like this. And Erwin's gonna come and show you a much better example. For each one of these React components, there is a configuration file that's stored within SharePoint which allows you to modify and play with it and mess with it. So you can set up configurations so different departments can do whatever they want with it, change it, play with it, what have you. And this gets saved with that one. Or, you know, so I can go in here and I can go, la, 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 la. and it changes over there and goes la 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 la. Right, brilliant. That one, not so much. Right, so it's all completely compartmentalized, so you can use it throughout the system, right? So, uh, Erwin's gonna come up and show you some actual React, because he's an actual developer. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back next year and actually show you some more of this in depth when we have a little bit more time. There you go. Hello, everyone. Hello, oh, yeah, Erwin. Oh, my beer's warm. We want to see if we can capture the screen. Oh, no, 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 it you, should go straight back on. No, you just, well, you're going to have to oh, push it again. Yes. Yeah. Stop it. No, hang on, I'll do it. it no, oh. you did it. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Damn. All right, so apparently this is Erwin. We don't yeah. know him. Hey, Erwin! We snuck him in. <laughs> he wasn't on the list. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the surprise for tonight, guys. My name's Erwin. I'm a developer here at PSC. 
Um, I'm very, very new to React, um, maybe two weeks, so please don't ask me any questions. <laughs> but uh, I've been working on this SharePoint framework stuff, which is pretty cool. And one of the examples that I was given to try to come up with was um, the calendar on SharePoint is not very good looking. Um, and there are other solutions out there with JavaScript that make really nice calendars. But um, I guess this one client wanted on their homepage, they want to see that modern calendar view with like, um, they're just like squares with you know very little information about the events. And then on different pages, they want to see an actual full blown calendar. So what I did was I went through, and if you guys, this, you're gonna wanna zoom that in. Zoom in. Uh, on the code. Uh, I don't know. Plus. Uh, wait, wait. Control, control Shift Plus. Sorry. Control Shift Plus. There you go. Is that better? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so this is all pretty much the uh, project itself is mostly out of the box with uh, Yeoman, right? And you just say Yeoman at Microsoft uh, SharePoint, and um, it just creates all this stuff for you. Uh, with the component folder already in there and a hello world component from that you just take it and you start creating your own components and it just kind of all works together so what I did was I went through and I created a couple of components I took um, one from the internet that was well from github right that was a calendar which is uh, created with react so the calendar is created with little components and then you just use that so you're just building these little boxes into big boxes, right? And making them look nice. Um, once you package this stuff, uh, let me show you over here. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, so this calendar here, that's like the, the modern uh, way to view it. And um, these events are all within SharePoint, right? There's this, this uh, React um, application here. Um, it's really just displaying data um, that is within SharePoint and that's where the SharePoint framework comes into play where it gives you those hooks into the data and all the stuff that exists in here. Um, the nice thing that you can do though is this is all just the same um, project here but if I go in and edit um, and I say I want to view the classic way it switches right away. Um, and just like Mark was showing, you can have this same uh, web part, you know, in different places or multiple in the same page if you wanted to. And it's, it's all, you know, conforming to whatever you really want it to be. Um, and you can imagine, um, you know, a scenario where you can add more uh, customizations on the side here. You know, maybe you want the title to be a little different or something like that. But it's all just feeding into um, those React components right through properties and whatnot. So, um, yeah, and it's all, it's not in an iframe. So, <laughs> so yeah. I'm curious to say, like, how do you expose, I'm assuming these are just like props going into your React component. Yeah. How do you expose those so that you're able to work with it in whatever you're opening here where you've got the like configuration for that? So, how do you expose? let them change the title, let them change the view. Well, so you should come in January and <laughs> he'll show you. But yeah, briefly, so, yeah. so this is what this is where we realize that this is a much broader talk about how React works within here. All I wanted to talk about was the fact that it was there, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't so, know how it works. Oh my God. See? <laughs> Like this one right here. So really, I just have the one, the view type, right? So mm -hmm. they're from SharePoint or through the the code that is uh, that would be SharePoint framework, right? You can um, tell it what stuff you want in that side bar there, and they have all sorts of things, right? Um, so I just put a, a very simple uh, drop down, and it's not obviously best practice to pass in hard coded letters or anything like that. But uh, I just pass in uh, that key, right, a, a C or an M for classic or modern, um, into the first uh, component, right, which then 
decides what to render and it's just mm -hmm. rendering components from there and it's just going um, the other nice thing with this stuff is that Microsoft has uh, this office UI uh, fabric which they've created components already that look and feel like Microsoft things um, so you can create these pages that look like they're out of the box Microsoft um, and you do very very little work you're, you're really just you know applying CSS and, and whatnot um, and downloading those components and, and using them so it's pretty cool to, to use any other questions so there, there's a lot more that goes into how this builds and what yeah, sure. we'll, we'll talk about yeah so how are you feeling about react two weeks in? well I think it's great yeah I've been doing react and angular uh, new to both um, so it's been an interesting so to answer your question about how quickly can you learn React, the answer is how much of a shit hot developer are you, right? <laughs> you gotta look at yourself hard. Because <laughs> he can do that in two weeks, can you? Yeah. <laughs> you right. How long have you been programming? How long have you worked in JavaScript? Uh, so I've been doing JavaScript. Um, since the beginning of this year, uh, yeah, 2018. Um, I was working at a client where we were modernizing their e-commerce site and they were moving over to Angular with a node, uh, not backend, but node like middle, like, uh, I don't know what you even call that. Um, but that was connecting with IBM, so I was working on the node side. Um, so that was really where, where I started working with JavaScript. but. I mean, if you know any little bit, I think of JavaScript, you don't you don't have to be that uh, proficient at it. I think it's very easy to pe to, to pick up yes. React. No. Uh, See, but he's also not telling you this is this is written in TypeScript. Yeah, right. right? So just because you can program jQuery does not mean you can do this. I can do jQuery. I cannot do this. <laughs> right? It's very it's very easy though. It's very, it's, it's, it's so very is easy. car maintenance. It's, <laughs> <laughs> if you're a mechanic, <laughs> it, it comes with practice though. I mean, right? Just like anything, but it's uh, the syntax is the concepts are not hard to understand. The syntax I think is a little harder, but that just the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. You know, just muscle memory. Um, so the concept, so it's not too hard. You're just building small things and packaging them into big things, right? That, that's a very simple, straightforward, I think. There's some guy named Joe that's got some egghead videos on using React. Yeah, so <laughs> check them out. About two years dated, but I just went through them like last weekend. Yeah, no, I still get people playing. Yeah, it's like you know, it's old now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, I think that's it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.